Hello everyone, Reginald Peoples here with RWB Sports. You know there's a lot of aspects that come into getting someone prepared for a competition, whether it's MMA, boxing, whatever the contact sport may be. There's several people that are involved in getting this together. A lot of people say that it's the loneliest sport in the world when you're in the boxing ring. Or they say it's you, mano a mano, once you're in there with your opponent. That's true to an extent. But truth be known, there's a lot of factors that go into getting someone ready for competition. You have your trainer, you have your nutritionist, you have your strength and conditioning coach, and you have your team that's around you getting you prepared. Where today, we're here at East Rating Boxing Club at Unconquered Fitness and Wellness with Eric Spring. Eric Spring is a strength and conditioning coach that gets a lot of people into Reading, Pennsylvania ready for competition on whatever combative sport that you're in, whether it's MMA, because he was an MMA uh, contender, boxing, he was a very decorated boxing um, fighter. So right now, I'm going to bring Eric Spring onto the scene and get a few questions and talk to him what it takes in order to get someone prepared for battle. So, if you would, Eric Spray. First of all, sir, thank you for taking time out of your day to do this interview with me and to let the fans know what it takes and what all it entails to get someone ready and get someone prepared uh, for competition. Um, RWB Sports is doing a magazine and the magazine is covering uh, strength and conditioning coaches, they're covering nutritionists, they're covering trainers, and they're covering fighters. You being a strength and conditioning coach and one of the prominent strength and conditioning coaches here in the Reading, Pennsylvania area, um, is one reason I wanted to reach out to you because it's not just that you know strength and conditioning, you've been there. All right? You've been in the ring, you've been there, uh, and you know exactly what it what all it entails in order to get ready. So let's talk to uh, the fans and let them know uh, where you are and what you're doing and how they can get in touch with you. Tell them about Eric Spring. First of all, uh, like I said, I was a former fighter. I did seven years pro boxing, had a pro career 13 and four and three draws. Um, amateur background was uh, kickboxing. I had three titles with USKA. Record and that was 14 and three. And then before that, I was a regular martial arts kid from eight years old all the way up to college till I was 20 years old and from there transitioned to kickboxing. And then from kickboxing, I had a chance at age 30 to go pro boxing. Okay. And a lot of people think age 30, making your debut uh, in boxing, that is the new 20. 30 is the new 20 in the sport of boxing now because of the safety features that are implanted and because of the preparation that you all do now uh, in the sport of boxing, getting you ready, you're more conditioned, you're a lot more in tune to your body so you don't get hurt as much, you don't get hurt as easy. So how important is strength and conditioning in what you do uh, to the sports of MMA and boxing actually? Uh, very important. Well, first of all, you know, it's, it's one of the top things as far as getting in shape, uh, safety, uh, to prevent injuries, you know, right. people wait till after injury, they get surgeries and then they want to do strength and conditioning or they want to do therapy or rehab, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but if you do certain stuff, you know, a lot of resistance bands and stuff to prevent those injuries, you don't have to go through surgeries. And that's just a freak accident. But um, right. like I said, I first started it when I was in college. I didn't want to gain weight. I was a martial artist at that time. I was 120. My coach mm -hmm. at that one time wanted me to be 145. So a martial arts 145 is a middleweight back then and that's how I learned the weights, different trainings. The first time I learned was through football players, was just to bulk up. Okay. But you know, as a fighter, you don't want to be a bodybuilder. So you wanna if you just bulk up, you're gonna be stiff, especially if you're a speed fighter. Right. So I had to implement, you know, the yoga, I had to implement the bands and different types of, you know, repetition to go with it. Um what I do now with the fighters I work with now, so this is very important as far as Straight to conditioning, having a schedule with the fighters and their coaches. It's mainly so the coaches say, you know, what days are sparring, so what days to go heavy, what days to rep, what days to give them a relaxed day if you're going to just do conditioning and agility drills. Okay. Um, so mostly, if they do come to me at all on the day of the sparring, I just do agility. I don't want to put no wear and tear on their body as far as lifting weights or nothing or, or burn them out where their, you know, their arms could be sore for later for sparring because they want to put 100% into that sparring alone. Okay. So either I'm getting them conditioning, 
to agility drills, ladder drills, to ball slams, um, nothing, nothing weights. Now, when I started training camp with a fighter, so if a fighter comes up to me, so say in the beginning of the year, January, we knew March was Golden Gloves. Mm -hmm. I start out slow with them. So the first two weeks, we're doing a lot of reps and calisthenics. So push-ups, they see you body, because a lot of boxers are new and amateurs. Right. No beginning level of strength and conditioning. Right. So we intro them with them with the push-ups. Instead of the traditional stuff, boxers would do. Then I'll add a little bit of light to five pounds. We'll get shoulder work in, because you know with a boxer, you want to work the shoulders and the lats. A lot right. When you turn into lats, so we start introducing the, the pull-ups, um, lat pull-down stuff, working the lats, focusing. And then I mainly give them their basic lifts as far as squats, um, not too many deadlifts. Uh -huh. I'd rather give them jerks where they can flex it for the explosiveness. Okay. So okay. not too much deadlifts because I put too much on strength, especially young kids. I won't give them deadlifts. Um, so we're doing reps. And then after that third to fifth week, now we're trying to up their power. Like every week we're going to five pounds up that strength. Okay. So now when it gets middle of February, we're getting back to reps. But maybe in the beginning of January, they're probably doing five, 10 pounds. Right. Where now they're doing the 15, 20, maybe 30 pounds. Okay. Now they see where they progress in the strength and also explosive in their punches. So this is where you got to communicate with the coaches a lot. Right. And that's another thing I was going to ask because you mentioned uh, an amateur level because there's different levels uh, in these sports. There's uh, intermediate, there's amateur, then there's a professional. As an amateur and doing uh, strength and conditioning, because at that point in time, I, a young fighter has not come into his body yet. So his muscles are still developing, his bones are still developing. What type of regiment would you give someone uh, who is just starting out, who is just wanting to learn the sport of, of MMA or boxing, either one, uh, to condition their body to get ready for what they're about to, to undertake? So I try to keep everything to their fight. So a lot of amateurs do three rounds, two minute fight, six minutes. So okay. I try to keep, if we're doing intervals, try to keep it that three, the two minutes okay. so they get used to exploding and that workload. Because a lot of times I see a lot of amateurs doing stuff for three, four, five minutes when you're only fighting two minutes. Right. So they go like, yo, I wasn't tired, but I didn't do nothing. Well, you're used to doing that extra minute mm -hmm. of doing extra work at the end of the round when you should have been working. So I try to keep it relative to the to the sport, to the to the rounds of what they're doing. So okay. if they're running, I don't have my amateurs doing no eight, 10 miles. Right. You know, and that's right. their lead during the tournament. Okay. Because you, know, you got to fight back there. But if they're doing like Golden Gloves one week, you'll know if you're doing three rounds, two minutes, you should not be running more than five minutes, five minutes, five miles. Okay. You know, but when we come here, we do the sprints, same thing. Where the pros, they got to do a little bit more. Now you're getting your five to eight, ten miles, depending on what, how many rounds they're fighting. Right. Um, interval time might be done. So my amateurs, I might do 30 second spurts, where my pros, I might do a minute. Right. That's the main difference, just the time. Just regulate that. But once you got elite amateur, you want to put them to that pro level because that's what's next coming for them. Okay. Yeah. All right. And when you do that, just say that you have someone that's just coming in. Um, that wants to get in shape, you know, they've been, they've fallen off the wagon like myself for quite some time and just want to get back into what they call personal shape, something that is, is pleasing for themselves. Just say, just take for instance, me, if I wanted to come to you, I said, Eric, hey, I need a program. I want to lose about 15 to 20 pounds, you know, try to get back into fight shape so I can start running again. Yes. What kind of program would you set up for me? So it was kind of like a brother law. So say if you couldn't jump rope, I'll probably say treadmill or a little tire touches. Um, I would substitute that, and then we're gonna go same thing with the late start with the lighter. Like if you were amateur, start mm -hmm. with the lighter weights, because you're gonna know your own body. Then you might say, Hey, Coach Eric, I can go a little heavier. Okay. So instead of five, I'm like, All right, go eight. So we implement it that way. But you want to do the same timing as many as you can. So if me and you were training. And you come back, I might be doing in one minute, say we're doing snatches, that's where you squat, put the, the weight up. Okay. And you, I got a 10 pound, you got an eight pound. I might be able to do 40 where you can do 20, but mm. that's your effort. Okay. I can't criticize. So now we know, okay, we write that, jot that down. You know, Reggie first came, first couple of weeks, he only did, you know, 40. Okay. And then we'll mark now, six weeks later, where you at in that same time. And you might be having heavy weight. So if you're hitting the same number, 40, but with a 20 pound, you got more explosive, you got stronger, and you know, you, everything's going down. So that's okay. how we got progress. So that's a, also another important thing. Boxers or trainers got to jot down the progress instead of trying to memorize it because you forget a lot of stuff. Right, and that's one thing that I was going to ask. It's like, how would you 
uh, go about in, in calculating that? And you just uh, clarified it by you, you would write it down, you would keep a chart, you would keep numbers of it so you would know your progression as you went on. Yeah. Uh, and that's another thing to, that we uh, like to say here at RWB Sports is that, you know, when you get someone like Eric Spring in your community, it's, it's one thing in someone doing it just to be doing it, but if you listen to the passion in his voice as he explains these things, you know that this is a passion of his. This is something that he loves to do. This is something that is not just, you know, a fly by night you know, business for him. It's actually a business that he looks for to help others. And you know, RWB Sports, we like to give back, we like to help, we like to do things. And that's one thing that uh, Unconquered is doing as well because he has kids in here from three, four, five, all the way up to 50, 60 years old uh, taking his class. So if you're in the area and you have that New Year's resolution that you have not embarked on yet or that you have not, you know, started to uh, even think about, I would come over here to East Reading at, uh, what's the address here? 35 Canal Street, third floor. Okay, third floor to Unconquer uh, Fitness and Wellness and, and talk to Eric. And He's very reasonable. If you would, if you want to let him know uh, some of your prices that you do uh, or some what you have, if you have like a, a five-day free course that somebody can come and check out or just how can they uh, get in touch with you and how can they uh, start one of the classes? So what I always offer, and then, you know, a lot of people disagree, I let your first three sessions free to try it out. Right. So I have I a schedule Monday that. through Friday. Monday is upper body lifts. Tuesday's cardio boxing, Wednesday's leg day, Thursday's cardio boxing again. So that's your two cardio days, and Friday's full body. So you can try any of those three classes for free. Wow. And then after that, we kind of sign, depending on how many days you want, right. what you're looking for, and then we go from price structure to there. All right. Well, you can't beat that. For Eric, I want to thank you, first of all, for uh, taking time out of your day for this interview. I don't want to hold you because I know you got classes coming up and they're waiting for you, you know, and I don't want to take their time because I know uh, they're, they're paying for your time. So uh, I appreciate you. Thank you uh, I really look forward to uh, working with you. I look forward to coming back over here more and, and, and seeing you guys. I did make a, a statement. I don't know when it's going to happen, but uh, I am thinking about coming back and, and training some fighters. So, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking about uh, coming back. So we'll we'll keep you informed. No, definitely. My daughter always loves having you around. So yes, sir. Around. Around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you once again. Yeah, this you. is Reginald Peoples. We're here at uh, Unconquered Wellness and Fitness with Eric Spring, and we will see you in the turn. Have a good one. Let's go. All right, get your hands up. Protect yourself at all times, man. Let's go. Get your hands up. Protect your chin. Boxing culture at a high level. You got to be destined to win. My team report all facts, no cap. Keeping receipts on records like they out here paying a tax. Inside info like stockbrokers flipping this crypto. Breaking down the sweet science. We could never be silenced. Create the alliance. It's destiny. We stand on honor over here at RWB. Let's go. Uh -huh.